Hey everyone, welcome to my next Wix code video where now I'm going to be going over authentication. And so like most of the things we've been doing in this tutorial, authentication is going to be used through plugins. And the way authentication works in Happy is through the use of schemes and strategies. And what a scheme is, is basically it can be something such as a basic authentication or digest authentication. And um, these are basically different ways of implementing um, the way to allow users to use your app. So for example, if you're using basic authentication, basically all that is is a pop-up when you show up on a web page that prompts the user for a username and a password, and if those match the provided credentials, they can see whatever they um, whatever is being restricted on the website. And so to start, we're going to be using Happy Basic uh, um, in this video to learn how to use authentication, just because it's very easy and it just gives a good general idea of how authentication works. And so to use this, the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to install it. So we're going to do the usual npm install at happy dash basic. And now that we have this installed, of course, we have to um, register it with our server as it is a plugin. So we're going to go down to here where we register everything. And let's create another key. Of course, we have to use the plugin key. And we are going to do require at happy dash basic right like this and so now we have registered our required scheme or the basic scheme with our happy server the next thing we need to do is actually create a strategy so if you can remember a scheme is basically an overall type of authentication and a strategy is how you implement that scheme and so what the way to do this is you use server dot auth dot strategy and then what you pass in first is the name of the strategy you want to make. And this can be anything you want. So for me, I'm going to call this one login because we're going to basically mimic logging in or implement logging into a website. And the next is the scheme. And so the scheme we are using, this has to be basic as we are using the happy basic scheme. And then finally is the object, the object options, which takes, which is different depending on the type of scheme you're using. For basic, what is required is the key validate. And what validate is, it's the function that validates the user and validates their credentials to see if they're actually allowed to log into the website. So what I'm doing here is I've created the key validate and then it takes a function. So I could declare this function here, but I could also just make it at the top to make this easier. So let's create a function. Let's just call it validate. We're gonna set this equal to an async function. And so what this takes is four parameters. So the first is request, which is just the user request to the server. Next is the username which is self-explanatory, and then the password. So the user's username and their password. And the final parameter is H. And H is, of course, the response toolkit. You don't need to provide H, but you do need to provide request first, or if you just, for example, do username and password like this, it will take username as the request object, password as the username. So you must include request, but H, um, you can just put there as well. But so for now, what we need to do, so this is where we're going to determine if the user is valid or not. And to do that, we return a is valid key with true if their validation, if their credentials were correct, and false if not. However, before we go any further, let's actually create a list of users. And so we're going to do that by creating an object with um, multiple objects in it that each will represent a user. So I'm going to create this, I'm called const users. We're going to set that equal to where the key for each user is going to be their name. So let's have one key be wit code and let's set their username to wit code like this let's set their password to soccer let's set their ID to zero and then let's set let's give them a name and let's just call it wit code with a space like this and now let's create another user let's call it the key Greg and let's do the same thing here So now that we've got our users object up and running, this is where we're gonna actually do the validation. So if you can remember, the first thing that we need to do, or you return is valid if the credentials match, and or is valid is true if the credentials match, and is valid to be false if they don't match. And so the first thing that we wanna do in here is we want to check if the user that is being supplied to the basic pop-up actually exists. So the way to do that is we're gonna do users of username, and we're gonna add an exclamation here for if that user doesn't exist, then we will return an object with the key is valid, and we'll set that to false. 
So basically what is going on here is this is why we have the username to be equal to the key. So if that user doesn't exist, then we're gonna return as valid as false. So this validation won't work and the user will be prompted again to log in. And if this, on the other hand, well, if this user does exist, we're gonna set the user equal to users of that username. And now we're gonna check it for the password. So then we will do if user.password equals password, then we wanna return is valid set that to true and then the next thing we can pass is credentials and these are things that we can then access later on in um, each of our routes with the request object so we can do request dot off dot credentials and then the name of the credential and so this can be whatever we want to pass and for me this is why I added these extra fields here ID and name because I want to be able to pass those too so then we can do ID set credentials equal to another object and we'll do ID will be user dot ID and we'll also pass the name and that'll be user dot name so if the password so if the user exists and then also if that password matches the password that was passed in to the basic pop-up so the username here is what's passed to the basic pop-up as a username and this is the password that is passed and so if those match the user exists and the password that it's supplied matches the password for that user will return is valid is true and then these credentials that we can use later on on the other hand say the password was not right then we will just once again return is valid false cool okay so now we've created our validate function for our basic scheme which is going to be passed in here so now we have a strategy called login and um, it is of the basic scheme and this is our validate function and so the next thing we should do is let's create a route to implement this scheme and so what we should use let's use the login route here and what we're going to do instead is actually to avoid messing with this let's just make another route and let's do method this will be get the path is going to be let's do login basic and then for our handler the user will request h okay and so this is where we're going to do our validate functions so we're going to return welcome to my restricted page something like this and so right now this would not do anything so if we just went to this page um, we would get welcome to my restricted page and this is because we have registered this strategy with our server but we are not actually implementing it on any of our routes and so to do that we are going to pass another parameter called options and then what we're going to pass to that is auth and then what it goes here is the name of our strategy and so the name that we called it right here is login so now if we go to this route, we should be greeted with the pop-up to log in, and then we should check if our credentials match. So let's run this. And then let's do the usual dash E HBS um, JS server.js. Oh, we're up and running. Let's go here. And let's go to dash login basic. And so here is the basic plugin. So you can see it always says username and password. And this is just what it's going to say. So it's not you're not able to change this to be, say, something different. It'll just always be this little pop-up. You can make the pop-up disappear by messing with the headers. I believe it's www.authenticate. But we're not going to be doing anything like this because we'll be using different uh, schemes to implement different types of logging in. But so for now, let's just add our username. And I believe one of them was wit code let's get it wrong so do this sign in you can see it just popped up again and you can see also we can't see any of the content here because we have not authenticated ourselves yet but so if we do wit code and then for the password i believe it was soccer cool now we'll get welcome to our restricted page because we made it so we have implemented this strategy now and we have added implemented basic authentication onto our server however you may be wondering Right now, we, can, we can't really log out. So let's say we go back to the home page. Let's go back to the login basic. We won't get prompted again. And that is because usually you do not use um, the basic scheme for logging in and logging out. That's usually used more so with sessions and cookies. But what I want to show you is I also want to show you a cool plugin called Boom, which can be used to, say, log you out of a basic authentication. And so what Boom does is it basically throws um, 
uh, user-friendly HTTP messages. And so the way to use this is we're going to do npm install at happy dash boom. And then let's require it right here. So we're going to do const boom equals require at happy dash boom. And now let's create a, let's create a logout route. So we're going to go down. We've got login basic. Let's then make a method the usual path, but this time let's do dash log out basic and handler as to request h and then what we are going to do is we are going to return an un unauthorized um, HTTP token. So we're going to do boom dot unauthorized. So this was basically be a 401 error, which means that you are unauthorized. And so what that will do is that will log out the user. So let's go run this again. Oh, unexpected token. We didn't add our comma because this is an array of objects for each of our routes. Let's see. Now we're running successfully. Let's go back in here. Go back to login basic. We're still logged in. Now let's go to log out basic. And you can see we got this status code. So this is what we sent to the user, a 401. So now they're logged out. So we can go now if we go back to login basic, you can see we're prompted again. Whereas last time we were not being prompted. And thanks to Boom, we were able to stop this. And now let's log in again. Sign in, and we're signed in again. But now let's go back here. And something with Boom also you can do is you can pass a message. So if you go back into here, and we did log out basic, you can see this message right here just says unauthorized. We can do it to something such as you have been logged out successfully. Run the server again. Now let's just log in one more time. So wit code and then soccer and now let's log them out. So log out basic. And now you can see the messages you have been logged out successfully. So that's just a cool thing we can do with Boom. And of course, like I said, we're not really going to be implementing login. There's not really a login and log out per se with the basic scheme. It's just a great way to introduce you. We'll be going over that with um, strategy or with cookies. So don't worry about that. But then there's one last thing I wanted to show you is also we made this credentials object up here, but we haven't been using it. And as I said, it gets passed to our request object. And so because we have registered the plugin, or yeah, we have registered our, our strategy login here with this route, we can access these credentials. So instead of saying welcome to my restricted page, let's greet the user with a custom message. So let's say welcome, and let's get let's make a variable called name. Let that set that equal to request dot it's off dot credentials and then the name of the credential. And so for us, it was name. So if we go up here, if the password was, if the user logged in successfully, you pass the credentials with the keys ID and name. So we're going to be accessing the name key by the key name. So we will do request to auth.credentials.name. And now we can say, welcome name to my restricted page. So save this. And now we should get a custom message. So let's go back here. It's getting kind of tiring, but let's just log in one more time. So we get prompted with this. Wit code, soccer, and hello, welcome wit space code to my restricted page, which then you know corresponds to the name wit code right here. So we are accessing that successfully. And now there's actually one other last thing I want to show you. And so we registered this plugin or our strategy with just this route here, login basic. What if we want to use it throughout our whole application? Because it would be kind of annoying, you know, to constantly for each one of these do options off login, options off login. There is a function called that you can use called server.auth.default. And this will basically be the default strategy that we want to use throughout our application. And so we can pass in, once again, it's by name. So if we pass in the name of our strategy is login, if we pass that in here to default, 
now you would have to log into every single page. So let's show you what this would be like. So if we go here, let's just go to our home page, and I believe it's because we are still logged in. So if we do log out basic, okay, we've logged out. Now let's go to the front page, and you can see even on the home page, we're being prompted. So let's do wit code soccer. And now you can see we got into the net, the home page. And now let's just go to users and you know that we are still logged in. So then the only way that you could log out again is by going to log out basic. And now say we go to dash location. Once again, even that is restricted. So we have to sign into every page to see um, whatever is being hosted there. And so that is basically everything I want to show you for the basic login. Um, also, something you should note about BASIC is security-wise, it is not recommended at all because, um, well, these are sent in clear, the validation information is sent over in clear text, so it can easily be deciphered. So you'd have to use some kind of um, module like Bycrypt or something to encrypt the passcodes, but even then, they could easily be um, sniffed out in plain text and deciphered by someone else over the internet. So you would also have to, if you're using basic authentication, you should always make sure you're using some sort of secure layer such as HTTPS. But so that is one thing I wanted to mention and we will be going over um, encryption and security on hap happy applications um, later on in the series. But for now, just um, keep that in mind. And now in the next video, we're gonna be going over um, another type of authentication or another scheme. And so in this one, we went over the happy basic scheme. In the next one, we're going to be going over cookies or um, the session scheme. So I'll see you in the next video.